Hey guys, it's Leanne, the Crafty Little Ninja, and today I have a different project for you guys. I'm trying out Swilligant and Patina with Swarovski look, and I hope you enjoy. So I'm just starting out with granite and black clay, but you can use whatever clay you want because you end up covering the whole thing. This was my first time trying the Swilligant, so I was just using trial and error. So again, I'm using a lot of foil. I'm basically molding the shape of the saxophone with the foil. It's a lot more lightweight, takes up less clay, and yeah, it's really great for bigger pieces. So I mixed it up. This would actually be a really cool look if you wanted to do like a lava rock, which I might do in the future if I did this again. And now I'm just covering the foil. This project was inspired by a lot of things. Um, the music department in our island has this really cool uh, instrument display outside of the auditorium. And it has a lot of instruments with the patina look. And I think I was going for that. I also always had this idea of um, a saxophone with liquid pouring out of it. And I was also inspired by, I think that's Tina Yu on Instagram, and she uses like this Swarovski spread. And so I kind of used that along with my, what do you call it, my beads arrangement, which I use Swarovski and different plastic beads. And so I think it was a really cool like mashup of different inspirations. I also learned about the resin waterfall look from nerdy crafters tutorial i'll leave the link below she did it for a little waterfall i think it was with a ghibli scene actually so here i'm just adding on the basic key shapes and i felt like i didn't have to put too much details you know like extra keys there i just wanted the simple look of the saxophone because it's all gonna get rusted up So you bake that according to instructions and you come back after 30 minutes. So here it is baked and I think it looks like lava rock and I th actually I could have just left it like this and I think it would have had the same effect that um, or a different effect but I still really liked it. But I really wanted to try out this swell again. So here I'm putting the prep layer on so that the, the metal will stick to it. And you have to coat everything so this is why i said you could just use any kind of clay you want or even scrap clay because you're going to end up covering everything i kind of thought that you would i would have some spots showing so i wanted to have that dark color underneath but i ended up covering the whole thing i also decided to try out the bronze swell again just to play around i've yet to try all the other ones i got it in a pack from Fire Mountain Gems. I also used their YouTube tutorial on how to do the whole patina effect as well. So go check out that tutorial. I'll have the link below as well. It was really, really helpful on how to apply everything. And I kept referring back to it as I did this. So you have to make sure you cover everything with the metal, let that dry, and then when you choose what patina you want to use, you have to go again with a very thin layer of the metal before putting on the patina because as the tutorial said, the patina likes to work with a wet metal. So here is just a short time lapse. You can kind of see it changing color. It's just this green effect. I think it's pretty cool that it changes pretty quickly like it starts to oxidize in front of your eyes and it continues to oxidize even after I went to bed for the night. 
So here I'm doing the key section, going with a thin layer of the bronze and then putting, I think I'm trying out a different patina. I wanted to try out a couple of different ones just to see which one I like. And already, this is the next shot and you can see it, it's already turning color, which is really, really cool. Again, I got it from Fire Mountain Gems website and I used their YouTube tutorial and it was really, really cool. It comes with like a, it's just a small like sample pack so you don't have to invest in like a huge, a huge bottle. And I think this is the perfect size if you're just experimenting. I've had the Swell Again for over a year now and I'm only using it for the first time now. Like I finally got brave enough to try it. And here it is, I just finished covering the whole thing and you can see how much it already oxidized. This is so cool how it's kind of just like a dark bronze and then by the time I finished or the next day it was even more oxidized. So now I'm gonna make the base. This one is a different type of base compared to the last YouTube I did. The last base I did was kind of like a cracked ground, so similar, um, similar foundation covering a wooden base with clay and texturing it, but this is more of a stone texture. The stone texture reminds me of the our local music department of stone floor it's just kind of it's not this particular pattern but i wanted to just do a simple stone pattern without making it super symmetrical because i think that would have been harder to do um, i think also the asymmetrical patterns works for this i was also inspired by an instagram her name lady Acorius tienda she does these amazing chubby woman figurines and she's been making these amazing bases and i normally don't make bases but i think for my bigger pieces like this i enjoy making a piece because you don't want it to stand by itself and um she did this really cool base for her zelda theme chubby lady and i thought it was so cool like this is nowhere as good as that you should totally check out that post and um i really enjoyed seeing her uh, work in progress pictures but this is a very simplified version so here i'm just adding some shading just to make it look a little aged since the saxophone is supposed to be you know very rusty and old so i wanted the base to be old as well This is black acrylic paint watered down and I fill in all the gaps just so it, it kind of brings out all of the outlines. You fill it in with the black acrylic paint and then wipe it off with a baby wipe. And so all it does is take away the paint from the top and it leaves the paint in the crevices. This part was from um, Nerdy Crafter. I watched her YouTube tutorial. It was this little Ghibli scene. I think it was the one that her husband bought her $100 worth of craft supplies and she had to make something. And I thought it was like a super cute video. I really like how it came out. And then she did this cool waterfall effect where she put a piece of 
plastic. I used a little Ziploc bag that I cut and attached it with um, UV resin. That's a UV light, a small UV light over there. Uh, and I let that cure. Now I'm just making the water portion, so slowly building it up. And then I decided I want it to be blue. I was debating whether to just leave it like a blue water, like a waterfall, same as Nerdy Crafter. Um, and then later on I decided to add some some beads and stuff. I added some green and blue dye just to make it look like water. It's a little thin, a little too thin to have a lot of texture so um, this was just more for coloring it and it decided to have a little pool. So here I attached it with just more UV resin to the base and that part's done. And now I'm just going to add Swarovski crystals. So this piece was a complete just experiment. I've done, I think everything was pretty much new techniques or challenges for me. Even this whole Swarovski waterfall, I've never done anything like this before. I only put my Swarovskis and beads on my small resin pendants and in little clusters, not like a big waterfall like this. So this was also challenging in its own ways, like dispersing where I should put all the pearls. So I did the waterfall and then I just add a little bit more to the bottom and that's it. I'm not sure if I'm actually done with it. I might want to put more bronze or more patina on the saxophone before I feel finished. But for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my process and I hope you enjoy these types of projects. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.